Yo. That's Pete, he's up there watching the lightning playoff. We got a couple fly rods, a couple plug rods, a couple tarpon rods. Not really ideal conditions, kind of southwest wind, 10 to 15. I don't know, let's go try to catch some bait on the beach and see if we can make something happen. Maybe some tarpon, maybe some snook. We have a super good outgoing tide, so that's you know a big plus and kind of feels tropical out well it's the first day i haven't been sweating in a while so that'll be our uh our game plan get some bait and see if we can make something happen to like choke this net down in the water. I popped one the other day doing that. Live trauma with that. We got what we need to try to do a little yeah. chum and it's it's kind of rough. Um, these fish are probably gonna be sitting down a little bit more. Um, if it was calm, you know, we probably wouldn't need the chum. These fish are already kind of oriented on some bait. So uh, this is just gonna bring the fish towards the boat to where we don't have to move around as much, kind of concentrate them. So. You had the old faithful of pilchards just shooting out. Look at the yeah. The dolphin boat really gave it up for us. They're a professional tarpon seekers. So basically this is just a giant gorge of minnows and this is like a golden corral for tarpon. They just can't get enough of you can see there's there's a fish rolling probably every five five to ten seconds over here. And uh, this is probably their favorite food, you know, especially in this area is these type of minnows. And if you look at our side scan here, there's so many fish. I can't even talk anymore. So what are you gonna do? We're gonna try to get these things going on some chum. So first we'll start with some dead, trying to get them oriented towards our boat. And then we're gonna break out some live, but I've never had a uh, dolphin boat on us. So this could get interesting. perfect tarpon and stop them at a certain size, that's it. Ah! I knew that was coming. Nope. There you go. Oh, 
goes, buddy. Good job. Perfect little relief. Actually, I had a guy, a client, and he's like, I'm tacoed. And like after that, it just, it just freaking, it lived in infamy. Taco City. This is brutal, bro. There's something circles around me. I'll get a boil behind the dial. You can put so much more pressure at these little reels to the thumb pressure. It's crazy. I think it looks like a bass reel. It kind of, it really is. Those guys in California use it for those uh, rock bass calicos. But it's my favorite tarpon reel to be honest with you. This might be the first. That's the first or second tarpon I've caught this year. <laughs> I caught one on one fly this year. Or I think I caught one with my fiance. I see how it is, Pete. I come for you. Get the little one to bite for you. I chump for myself, you fly fish, and you put me on the big one. Oh, look at that boil behind the butt. Look at him going. Look at him in the minnows. Look at him. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're a show kitty for sure. I think he's got some cool markings on his back. You see that? All, that one side, all its scales are black. Thank you, buddy. Back to the minnow pod. Nice Come one. again. Oh, look at them behind the boat. They're flashing. He ate my worm. He ate my worm. Look at the boils behind the boat. Oh, dude, drone. They might go eat shit. You look like another good fish, didn't it? Yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. I was trying to see why my uh, fly guy didn't have one yet. But typical feather. It's usually enough just having a tarpon on dancing around the boat, but then when you got a million minnows, fly line, fly line, and the fact that it feels like you're sliding around on ice, and you can't take your eyes off all the fish that are just detonating. Perfect. There you go. Oh, maybe they do. They're obviously eating the dead. Woohoo! Perfect. Oh, yeah, they're in the dead. 
Hey Pete, you doing good up there? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh yeah, they're in the bed. Oh, that's good one. I'm good, I'm good. That's a giant. This is a big one. I feel bad for you. <laughs> I think I got one. Two jumbo. Two jumbo eyes. Thomas, you're getting dusted, bro. I mean, there's a rule on this boat. Stop them or pop them. We got these fish chummed up. They are uh, responding heavily. <laughs> and this is just pure greed. Ooh, 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 there goes the brave. Still no luck. Oh, not 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 much longer. I think I got one. I think we figured out the code. Don't go that way. I think it's a tarpon. How much dead bait you got? Dude, I spent three hours yesterday. Like this morning I woke up, I was like tired. I was like almost hoping like you're gonna call and be like, hey, we gotta wait. Like that's all tired I was. <laughs> Cause I had to bag it all too. I mean, I didn't get done to like 10 last night. Dude, they must be sick. <laughs> I don't like each other. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, they each think the other one's gonna eat them. Oh boy, have fun, Pete. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, just pull the hook. Perfect. <laughs> Pulled that's, it straight. That's another. <laughs> Let me do that. That's when you know you got the right drag on them. I thought we were using circle hooks. This is a J. Well, you know. Basically, we are deep water catfishing for you freshwater guys, you know. We're taking some really stinky bait here. You really don't want to smell that. Threading it through a circle hook, tossing it out. Oh, oh, you know, that's a problem. Lots of seagulls. Never get bit with three, only with four. So once again, we're gonna flip this out here. Oh my God, this whole fishing show isn't gonna work, is it, Kevin? I'll 
Open up everything. Alright, let's try this again. The secret bait. Flip it real far, real precision cast. Put it in this thing right here. Really pay attention to it. Don't take your eye off of it. See, once it gets in the mud like that, those kitties, they get their whiskers down in there and they sniff it out almost every time. Please visit us at catdaddy.com for all our apparel and merchandise. Now there's a little bit of technicality about this. You gotta catch the bait, chum them. When they roll, you take a handful of this and feed them. Hybrid is good. No, they want the stank. Thomas, you want this? I think they're eating them off the surface back here. He said he was good. That old gag. Down there eating. <laughs> the rod, the rod, the rod, he's just down there eating. Very odd and weird tarpon bite, and kind of when I was correlating the catfish to the tarpon thing, is that rod didn't move at all. And I literally picked the rod up, and the fish was sitting on it, almost like you would do. I mean, that is when you know they're thick, bro. <laughs> yep, set the hook of the circle hook. There you go, drive it home. <laughs> You're on. Yeah, you're good. Oh boy. Come on. <laughs> Michael Jackson gloves tight. Not in the boat, Donsel. <laughs> Through and through. All right, one, two, three. That really hurt. I didn't sign up for all this. I think we're gonna have to banish this technique after a night. Go back to live baiting. Every time I turn the handle, I'm just thinking about what I'm going to eat tonight. Look at this thing. Steak, macaroni and cheese. Generally, people think about tarpon season April, May, June. And we have fish, you know, in the general area until December. Um, every year is different. It's hard to plan anything this time of year. You just kind of, kind of, you got to have the, you know, the notion in your head that you're going to go look. But generally when you find the fish this time of year, they're going to set up in a pattern, you know, until something changes them like 
a hurricane or a cold front. So, you know, if you find fish in August, you're usually going to see them until September, October, you know, November, and that same type of deal until weather changes them. I'm out of shape. <laughs> you need a hand there, sailor? Pretty work. You want this for a souvenir for your cat? It's not a fly. I think, I think you put some pressure on him. Yeah. I've had enough. I don't know if you... I was... I had enough about four or five ago, to be honest with you. <laughs>